independent producers on a local basis feed a lot of, of jobs into the community. The revenue from the, the oil and gas that they're selling feeds, of course, a tax base back into the local community to help build hospitals, to help fund schools, and giving a lot back to the community. So it's really important this industry to remain viable domestically. A lot of rural communities would not exist without stripper well production in them. Uh, people get royalty off them. Uh, they're able to keep farming because they're getting money off of the oil and gas or they're getting a part-time job from pumping these wells or from the variety of spin-off businesses that come from an operation like this. There's the direct support and there's the indirect support. Direct support are the companies that we employ, our employees, but the, the tanker, uh, the construction crews, those are people employed by what we call service industry companies. But then there is that indirect involvement of the industry to the people that don't know what we do, but yet they're uh, supported by our dollars that enter into the local economy. In 2002, when the nine miners were trapped in the Q Creek mine, the community was very concerned, as was the nation, how were we going to rescue those nine miners? The companies that provided the equipment to drill the wells were local companies, marginal well drillers. We knew that there were miners alive, and now we had to design a way to drill a hole large enough to lower that basket down to get the miners out. Those crews never went home. They stayed right on that location to give assistance whenever necessary. We were willing to provide whatever equipment we had, whatever expertise we had, uh, whatever it took to help save those nine lives. We were successful and all nine miners were rescued. When you're local, it is your community. Everybody's a neighbor. The amazing thing is we're spending a lot of money to import crude oil from people who do not pay any taxes, do not support any communities in the United States, do not support any manufacturing base or anything like that. And in fact, we're spending a lot of that money on um, countries that really just don't care for us at all. So <laughs> it's kind of an amazing, um, amazing turn, let's say. And the one thing about the small independence in this country, we're not going to run out and put our money in South America or you know Northern Africa or Asia or you know China or someplace else. I mean, we're putting our money in our backyard. And if we can keep all these low-producing wells producing for years and years and years, that's jobs for people right here. And so that money is staying here. So it's it's American companies producing in American wells with American labor, and that money stays right here in our country. There's a perception that we have a dramatic negative impact on the environment. A lot of people don't even know we're here, so how negative can it be? There are a lot of very heavily drilled areas where there are wells every 1,500 feet or 2,000 feet, and people never even see them because, because their environmental impact is so small. Many years ago, I hate to say it, but our, our, our predecessors didn't care as much about the environment as what we do they didn't realize what the long-term effects were of dumping oil on the ground or, or dumping salt water on the ground, how it got into the groundwaters and polluted the groundwaters for 50 or 100 years. And the old history book tells us about Oil Creek being green to Franklin from some of these wells flowing up along here. They didn't know what to do with it. They had no technology to take care of it, so it run in the creek. But the creek still a pliable trout stream yet today. It's very different than it was 50 years ago. In any state, there are laws designed to protect the environment from any industry, and the oil and gas industry is no different. 
there are very specific procedures that we have to follow while drilling a well. We have to run pipe in the well called casing, which protects the drinking water supplies. We cement that pipe in place so that it's secure. We run other strings of pipe in the ground to isolate different producing zones from one another. We have to operate within very strict guidelines. Our operations, our drilling, our completion, our productions are constantly inspected by government officials, by people that are enforcing the laws. And these laws are designed to protect the environment. Everything you see in the oil and gas industry is, is sort of temporary. We're going to recover the resource, we'll come back in, and, and if the well's abandoned, you plug and abandon the well and, and move on to the next thing and completely reclaim the site. And a lot of times, like in Pennsylvania, we'll provide access to, to areas that, you know, didn't necessarily have access. What we make a point of doing when we do a lot of work with our farmers up here in New York, we'll make a point of talking to them about where they want roads because they're, they're in need of you know, farm and lease roads all the time. And if we work together so that we put them in the right spots, it becomes something that maybe makes a field accessible that they didn't have before. It seems that the oil and gas industry is a target. That we're, we're always made out to be the bad guys, that we're polluting and we're doing all kinds of bad stuff to the environment. When in actuality, if you look at our environmental record, and especially compared to some other industries, we have one of the best environmental records in the country. Just about every employee I have spends all their time outside. I mean, what, what they want to be able to do is they want, that, you know, they want a nice environment for their kids. I, I mean, I have a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old. I, I want it, you know, to be as nice for them as it was or nicer. You know, I think if you were to take a picture of the average independent in the United States, you'd get a, a very surprising picture. You'd find an outdoors person that's more concerned about the environment because we live out there, we work out there. A lot of times people will find out that you know, their neighbor works in the oil and gas industry and they'll say, well, I didn't know there were any wells here because they don't see them. And I think that's just a, a great testimony to how the wells can be environmentally operated and, and how they have minimal impact because people don't see them. People don't even know that they're there.